Ah, oh, hello, welcome. Coming up on the Retro Robin Show today, we go back to 1984, June as a matter of fact, when number Johnny 5 wasn't quite yet alive, but this is issue number 5 of Crash, as we re-review some more games from out of that particular magazine, and even have a look at the Crash Smash. Maybe it's a forgotten one. As well as some more Commodore vs. Spectrum, so join me next with the Retro Robin Show. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> oh, I pope. Nice one, Matthew. Run the titles. I can't run the titles. It'd just be rude, wouldn't it? It's good. Oh, it's real good. Probably better than me show. Oh, well. Welcome to the Retro Robin Show, with me of course Wayne, the show that based on Crash Magazine and just good old fashioned a love of 8-bit. So join me now as we go on a little tour of 1984, June, Crash issue number 5 and we're going to re-review some games from out of that particular Crash to see if they stand the test of time. And a big thank you to Matthew for surprising the A1, the A1 sound today. Um, Dave out, reply, thank you. <laughs> um, the first game we're going to have a look at, of course, was a Crash Mash. As a rule, I don't tend to touch Crash Mashes, but I thought, well, it's been such a long time, let's have a look at this game. And the game is, of course, the one coming up now. We'll go for a quick loading sequence. Oh, that AY sound is so good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Wipeout, love it. Right, so let's first of all start by selecting uh, joystick. Do I want Kempston? Of course I do. I've got Kempston plugged in. Sound on? Absolutely. And uh, I've done that, haven't I? You can save your game progress. You can load your game progress as well from uh, previous save times. And what you've basically got to do is there's loads of little ships that will come across the top. There's a total of nine screens, which is basically your basis on the ground. It's under attack by aliens. They're dropping things down. Illegal aliens, they look like... I don't know if they're meant to be actual aliens themselves, because they look a little bit similar. That's teeny tiny graphics that run across the bottom there. You're in that tunnel, and you've got to go around and start shooting up a few of them. Um, let's start the game, shall we, shall we? Get on. And of course you can flick between all of these particular screens and as you can see there's something coming there. So if we wait here now, as soon as that alien ship decides it wants to drop something, I'll be ready to clear it. Kill it. <laughs> oh, he's moved on to the next screen so let's follow him because he's awfully close. Aha, getting that uh, little red target thing and he's done for. Follow the ship here intently. It's a good tune for running along the car. Oh, we've got two of them now, so we've got to be even more careful. Turn around, about turn. The graphics are absolutely brilliant, aren't they? Little uh, layouts of like a little base or city. Um, the game is basically played here. Um, that tunnel there. Uh, as you turn around, the tunnel sort of changes direction, which is pretty good. You can flick straight to screens as well by particular, pressing particular numbers. For instance, if I want to get a straight to screen 9, I can go there. And uh, just as well, really, because... Oh, it's gone past me. Best to try and catch up from behind. <laughs> just love the AY tune. And as you can see, so what did Crash make of this particular game back in 1984? Oh, well, is he going to drop something? Sorry. He's gone. He's disappeared, hasn't he? Oh, he's probably gone down one of those other passages as well. So you have to catch him up pretty quickly or you can go... There he is. I've nearly got him. Oh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? He's gone. I think I've got him. <laughs> right, let's give it a. Let's have a look at the ratings. We're not going to rate it really. Well, I'm probably going to agree with Crash, to be fair. 
They gave user computer 85%, um, graphics 93%, playability 88%, addictive qualities 98%, wow. That's got to be one of the highest I've come across, and um, whew, addictive qualities 98%. Wow, no sorry, getting started 98%, addictive quality is 91%, so it's pretty easy to get into apparently. Um, value for money 88, overall 91, the cost was £7.95, and um, ooh, the author, Beyond Software. Actually they're featured with one or two other quite well known games. Um, the author was Tayo O-E-W-O, which is spelled T-A-Y-O. This is why I didn't want to do this. I hate pronouncing foreign names. O-L-O-W. And Paul. And I won't even bother trying to say his second name. So what do I think of this particular game? Well, actually, I think it's really quite good. But, you know, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Definitely worth a crash smash. Just for the, look, the different graphics alone, the, the scenery makes it. It does look like an alien, doesn't it? I think it is based, it is based on aliens. Computer J is, of course, the Engo clone of the Spectrum Next. We're also using the 48K Spectrum for, for Commodore vs Spectrum. And we've got the um, Toast Rack in the background supplying the AY sound, um, which you can hear. And I've got to let a bit of it play because there's a couple of AY tunes that uh, Matthew has done for me which I well appreciated. Didn't ask him, I just asked him if anyone had done the tunes and before you know it, he's done them. And he's done a good job of this one in particular. So, let's move on to the next re-review. Come on. So the next game I want to re-review is of... Uh, oops. <laughs> yeah, that noise in the background. That's me putting some on the keyboard. He's going... Got a lot of deleting to do in a moment. Right. Blade Alley. And producer. P.S.S. Dot dot it was £5.95. The use of graphics was given an 82% rating. No, it was given 87% rating. The use of computer was given an 82% rating. See, these things you have to rehearse. Otherwise you constantly read out the wrong ratings in the wrong place. All the right ratings, but all in the wrong place. Uh, playability 86%, getting started 81%, addictive qualities 89%, value for money 86%, well, 5.95, maybe. Uh, overall rating 85%. So, we're going to have a look at the game now. And, of course, we're going to use the tap file. This game does not work on the 1 to 8K, so you will have to use the 48K mode on your 1 to 8k spectrum. We will have a look at the brief look at the loading screen, so we'll wait there, we'll press 4 for 48. Keys and Kempston joystick available as use, which is good, especially for this type of game. There's your loading screen, and there's the game straight away, we're prepared to get in it. And I like this sort of game because once you select it, you're straight into it. Down is up and up is down. I kind of hate that to be honest. When I want to go up, I want to push up on a joystick, it's not dead. I've got one! I've missed one! <laughs> that looks like a TIE Fighter, doesn't it? Yep, and I can hit nothing! <laughs> so, at the moment, it's quite quick. A bit too quick for my liking. Can I get you? Oh, I can crash into you. I'm a kamikaze space pilot. Come on, let's get one. <laughs> Why am I not hitting anything? <laughs> it has to be said though, it is kind of fun to play. <sighs> oh, game over already. Um, they've not really done anything with the font, but then again it was 1983 and I was that real early days of computer programming. But for early days of computer programming it did get quite a high rating. It got 8 out of uh, 8 out of 10 really, didn't it, at 85%, which is precisely what I'm gonna give that. And 8 out of 10, it's okay. Um Space Cadet, that's my rating. <laughs> 
if there was a seventh, I'd be there. I'd be lower than Space Cadet. Basically, I'm in set seven. Oh well. So, what do you think? Maybe it's one that you'd like to give a go. Okay, with that said, let's move on to the next re-review. And we're going to have a look at a... Ooh, we're going to have a look at a nice game now. So, the next game I want to review... I'm going to give you the ratings before I show you the game. I actually quite like this game. It's quite good. Probably because it... Can I give you a clue of what we were talking about? Whoops. Whoops, a daisy. I've just knocked the SD card out. Should we try that again, folks? Oh, no, it's not the SD card. Or is it? No, it's not the SD card. It's me. I've hit the... Uh, I've hit the uh, remote control by accident. Are you still there? <laughs> Magic of television. Uh, okay, let's give you the rating. Use of computer 85%, graphics 88%, playability 85%, getting started 83%, addictive qualities 83%, value for money 84%, overall rating was 85%, another one that's got quite a high rating, 5% short of being a smash. Um, it's by DKtronics, the uh, author was E. Hitman, and the retail price was ooh, £6.95, so this better be good for that price! <laughs> it's not my joystick this week, it's something else. It's a remote control for the TV. So what's the game we're talking about? It is of course, Zigzag, and this also will not use 48k mode, we have to uh, load this as a Spectrum 48k game, as that was the year we came out in. So indeed we will, and you can use Kempson joystick. In fact it automatically goes there, we've got four different speeds, so we just press fire on Kempston in a minute, it gives you a little demo. I'm not playing this, it's playing itself. In fact, it's a good demo. <laughs> it's not a bad demo at all. Right, let's have a give it a go, shall we? S to start. Right, you get a little under, a little green arrow which tells you which direction to travel in. Whoops. Oh, I missed returning. There he is. Let's go again. He's toast. Takes a couple of hits. Oh, back of one. We'll come across another one in a minute. Follow the green arrows. Follow the yellow brick road. Oh, I see. Okay. We're in a different zone now as he changes colour. We heard something, didn't we? Up here. It's a case of seeking them out before you can destroy them. <laughs> it's quite a big page, really. I like the start of the game. Although you can go for a long time without actually seeing nothing. back up there. Right, well, follow the arrows. No, I found nothing yet. Aha! I'm on to you, young man. See, there's a little map being drawn at the top as you find new routes, so you can you don't have to go back on yourself. Uh, well, you can go back on yourself, but um, for instance, you know that that's a dead end, so you've got something you can follow. <laughs> what do I think of the game? Well, I think it's quite addictive, it's not too bad either. It, it runs very smoothly, it's a good little 3D scrolling game, really, isn't it? So, um pretty clear to see the turns, you don't get confused, and uh, 
Overall, I think it's a pretty good game. For that reason alone, I'm going to give that a slightly higher rating than Crash. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10 because I thought it was well done, especially for the fact that this was actually programmed in the late of 1983 and the start of 1984. Computers still fairly new to people and programmers are still finding their feet. So with that, let's get on to another re-review. Before we get started on this last re-review we're going to do from 1984, June number 5 of Crash of course. But let me just tell you that this game, believe it or not, is only 16k. The game is called It's a Wolf and of course it's by Crystal Soft, Crystal Computing, not Crystal Software. £6.50, uh, the author was Martin Buckler. So the use of computer is given 48%. Graphics was given 55%, playability 54%, uh, getting started 60%, addictive quality 48%, value for money 45%, overall rating 44%. Now that's quite a low rating for something that's made for 16k machine. Um, but we'll have a look at it now and tell you what I think. And of course, we're going to use the Z80 file. Remember, this will not work on the... It may work on the 48K, not a problem. It won't work on the 128K. You need to go in 48K mode. Why do I know this? Because I try them first. So, let's, uh, without no further ado, have a look at this game. And the keys are NMZX. And you've effectively, you're in control as a sheepdog with some sheep. That you've just got to try and navigate to a pen via a bridge dividing a canal. So there's a special place to start. And there's your wolf. <laughs> this could be basic, I don't know. I don't think it is, I think it's too smooth to be basic. So these are the sheep. And I've already lost one because he just fell into the river. Two. Three. <laughs> Why are they all congregating at the top? Come down. You have to keep them away from the water, but lead them to the bridge. And you can see the little... Come on. Why are you all drowned? You know, usually sheep don't drown, do they? And this one's a better. If you notice the fox is hiding in the woods as well. That can be quite annoying. Get up there. I've got one in! <laughs> I've lost one! <laughs> I've got one left! <laughs> Come on! Don't drown on me! I've saved you once! And you keep them away from the woods because as soon as they go in there, if the fox is in the woods, he's had it. You're meant to lead them round the maze map, but no! Stupid sheep! <laughs> I'm not going to play it anymore. I refuse to. For 16k, it's not bad. It's difficult. It's too random. They're going to drown anyways. Without you doing anything, they'll drown. I haven't managed to get more than three in that pen yet. However, 44% rating by Crash is a little bit low for something that only uses that much memory. Um, you'd be happy with this if you only had a 16K machine. You'd think it was pretty good. Um, so for that reason alone, I'm going to give it a slightly higher rating. One for you to have a little go at and... Um, Give it a go, give it a try, see what you think. You remember this show is run on real hardware. This is only opinion. At the end of the day, you may have a completely different opinion. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. With that, let's move on to Commodore vs Spectrum. It's a wolf! It's a wolf! Not a sheep! I even told you the name of the game! Okay. 
with a Commodore vs Spectrum today. This is one of the games that we're going to feature on the Commodore version. As you can see, the Commodore's coming first today. That is the loading screen and very nicely done indeed for the Commodore. And while that loads, we'll have a look at the Spectrum uh, loading screen, which will be very brief indeed. <laughs> so let's have a look at the Spectrum loading screen. We're going to use the tap bar for that. And of course, we'll wait at the loading screen, it will be very brief indeed. We'll go back to the Commodore in a moment. There you go, brief indeed. Let's go back to the Commodore. I'm sure that'll be loaded any minute now, so as we can judge the two. Oh yes, and Matthew also did this. Cheer up, sleepy Jean. <laughs> I need to drink first. Cheer up the... basically monkeys. <laughs> Cheer up, sleepy Jim. Another cracking AY tune he's done there. So, what do I know about this game? Well, basically, in this game, you've just got to catch a ball, throw it at your opponent, and knock them over. What a coupled throw chain that's constantly on a tension spool being pulled back. If you like, you could consider it a piece of bungee string that keeps pulling you back, so you have to sort of march forward, catch the ball and then throw it. Points are scored for knocking him down and of course once you've got a certain amount of knockdowns or depleted his energy you're the winner. You can play against each other or you can play against the computer. And as there's only me here, there's going to be me playing it. <laughs> Any minute now will be loaded. Let's have a look at how much percentage we're on or with the magic of editing. We'll zoom straight into it. So when the colour bars start to appear like that and the loading screen disappears, we're nearly loaded there with the Commodore. It's got nice sit sound. Just a moment to enjoy this tune. And of course for me to catch my breath. <laughs> Basically showing you what you both of these games have got a great demo. But what are they like to play? Okay, let's get into the game, shall we? And here we go. So you've got an actual tune inside the game itself. <laughs> oh, I got the first knock down, then knock myself down. <laughs> and as you can see, the energy is being depleted. <laughs> it's hard trying to catch the ball. Get up. Knock him over again. When the chain pulls you back, be, be wary because... Oh, get up. I'm just going to stab him. <laughs> he stabbed me. I'm just, just going to stab him. He stabbed me. That ain't fair. That was my, that was my tactic, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Got you. Oh yes, I've got him. How much? How many more times have I hit him? <laughs> Obviously, when you're that far forwards, it gets harder to. Oh, come on! <laughs> Stab me back. Okay. It'll declare a winner, and of course, that wasn't me. Oh, we change ends, don't we? We change ends. Let's have a look at the Spectrum version. And for that, we just need to go straight into... Um... <laughs> Come on then, Spectrum, what you got to deliver. Um, right, let's have a look. Kempston Joystick will be good for me, yes? <laughs> what? Hang on. <laughs> 
I just need to change my joystick over. Surprisingly, I usually knock it on the floor by now, don't I? So, yep, you can redefine the keys, I believe, but we're going to use Kempston in this case. And uh, secret controls. Oh. <laughs> I'm an expert, so I'm going to press 2. What I should do is I should select two players, and that way I can win. <laughs> and let's start the game, shall we? Let's start the game. Okay, it's monotone, black and white, but however, the sprites are nicely done. <laughs> I can't stab him like that on the other one. Okay, you can see uh, we've got less of a power indication on this one. There's no colours in it, it's just basically one colour. So it's hard to judge on that though. We won't judge it on that, we'll judge it on playability. And at the moment I can't even seem to catch the ball. C catch the ball! That's not fair, he's catching it too easy. When you're catching the ball, if you don't uh, walk forward, you're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, catch the ball! Oh, well, come on! <laughs> Fruit fighting one of them things. Yes, I've got a strike, I've actually got knocked him down once. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, let's stab you again. Oh, time's running out. And he's, uh, he's 10 5 to him, isn't it? Change of ends. <laughs> I'm losing badly. <laughs> I'm getting beat. I'm beating myself as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, both games are pretty well done. There isn't a lot between them. Um, Commodore 1's obviously going to have a little bit more colour. There's going to be no colour clash on either. Um, well, I suppose there is on the... I don't know if it's a bungee cord, a, a rope, elastic, <laughs> or a chain they're tethered to. But either way, they keep wearing them back and it's sort of in, uh, got attention on it. It's a fun game to play when you play it a lot. <laughs> I haven't played it for a long time, so getting into it was quite difficult. But here comes my verdict. Narrow decision. I did like the Sid sound at the show, uh, the start there. I thought the graphics were mildly better. The playability was slightly more easier, so that's why I gave it to Commodore. Spectrum version wasn't bad. And remember, this is only a matter of opinion. So the next game we're going to give it a look at is between the Commodore and this time we'll go for the Spectrum version, uh, then the Commodore version. Right there in front of you, it's a classic game. Nice loading screen from both. This is the Commodore version and Sabotor. So let's move on to uh, change while that's loading. And we'll let that load because I have to wait for the Commodores to load. I've not got an instant load. I've got a Kung Fu Flash. Ain't quite used, worked out how to use it. Oh, before we do any of that, let's have a look at the loading screen and compare it, shall we? Um, which I'll do now. So we want to, and of course the good thing is this will work with 48k. Brief look at the loading screen, there it is. Mm, uh, oh, we got a bit of uh, focus problems there by looks things. We're back now. Let me just kill the AI sound. This is iconic, I remember playing this for ages. Game I can complete, I used to go around. Once you stop the clock and go back around and kill every cat and uh, sorry every dog and man I could find bricks and finish them all off, then start the clock and run for it and catch the helicopter upwards. But that's what we did as kids. So as I say, we're going to really find the keys. You've all seen this before. I'm sure it's you know it's down as an all-time great game, isn't it? So. Um, 
I do remember being scared of the uh, £100 reward for any pirates at the start. <laughs> so you press, once you've got it, start mission. Um, nine. <laughs> Extremely easy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right, I've just uh, probably got games to night overnight. Have I? Yes, I've, I've left it in cursor mode, uh, Sinclair mode. Never mind, I can get around that. Whoops, <laughs> I can't even forget used to it. <laughs> I'm going up then. All oh, right, yeah, it's it's the arrow key. So here we go. So it's got to be down and fire, isn't it? I <laughs> gotcha. It's a brick here somewhere. Oh. I'll keep that for later use. That's the way you kick. Good stuff. I won't play for too long. <laughs> there goes the dog. Is this a dead end one? If you stand still you can reach Oh there's a knife there. I'll need that in a minute won't I? There's another dog coming here. Because I didn't have the right keys. Can I have another go? Let me really find my keys again, please. Ah, protect this boy. Just press K, then press start mission. It's my show, I can have another go, can't I? Watch how good I am now. <laughs> Famous last words. Quick go! You're dead. There you go. So yeah, you just basically. Go, I'm going to make it to the train. You've got a certain amount of time in, war in order to get to the and stop that clock from running. If you don't get there in time, then you are dead. Send me away. Oh, I've missed. Let's just get to the train. I just want to get it to the train, and we can see the train sequence, and then we'll move on to the Commodore version. Oh, forgot about me. Uh, I've just <laughs> quick. I need to recharge, don't I? If I don't recharge, don't grab some of that energy back on my dead donkey. Oh, just dog. I hate you, dog. <laughs> so, uh, we haven't got too long left. It's quite easy, this game, really, isn't it? We're in the train section. That's good. And any minute now. Fire then. <laughs> Just love it. Lovely big sprites, aren't they, on the spectrum? Lovely big sprites. Playable game. Very playable. <laughs> I'm running out of energy fast. <laughs> Gonna get there, I just shot him. I think we played this long enough, don't you? So we have a look at the uh, Commodore version. So we can select extremely easy. Ah, this time we start up here, do we? Is the brick there? Yep. Looks like pretty much the same. It says I'm carrying... Oh, that's for when you register on the computer, isn't it? It's moving slightly quicker, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh. Tell you what, it's considering it's a Commodore, it's not bad. It just looks too close to the Spectrum. So hang on there for you've got a train noise, I'll give you that. You've got an annoying noise, but it's not bad. 
Oh, I prefer to use the keys. Between the two games, there is absolutely nothing between them. Now I've got to try and not be un I've got to be unbiased here, and I've got to judge this by the way I feel that they play between them. Don't like that noise, to be honest. So um, it will show a bit more of the Commodore one. How do you judge this? Edward choose. I would say the Commodore one is easier, easier to play. Maybe that's not. I mean, I was kind of miles away from him there, wasn't I? Well, that's exactly the same as the Spectrum, really, isn't it? Okay, here comes my verdict. I'm going to get in first. I'm just sneaking up like a ninja. He's supposed to be a ninja. Who's the SAS? Oh, right in the back. Dirty low blow from Retro. Yep, I gave it the Spectrum. Probably nostalgia took a bit of a hold. I don't know. It was so close to call. It was hard to choose. And even now, I sort of. I'm fighting whether I've made the right decision or not, but I. I'm trying to be unbiased and I've got to go with what I felt I enjoyed the most. Commodore 1 is, could have done a bit more with what the capabilities of the machine for the sound wise. They could have seen in the game sort of, I don't know, maybe it would have taken something away from the game. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I prefer the Spectrum 1. I'm, that's just me. So it's one each today. Do hope you've enjoyed today's show. Please remember, if you did, to like, share and subscribe to help me to help this channel grow and I will make more programs like this one for you if you do find them entertaining which is good remember to leave a comment but in the meantime for me Wayne Retro Robbins it's nice to have your company as always take care have a nice working week or weekend and it's bye for now oh, shall I leave the daydream believer playing for a bit longer thank you Matthew spot on take care all Coming up next on the Retro Robin Show, we go back to 1984, June. Fine drinking, brilliant. <laughs> That's an outtake. <laughs>